Are Soviet and German tanks really better than American tanks? This question has sparked countless debates among tank enthusiasts and military historians alike. It's a provocative inquiry that takes us deep into the history of military technology, strategy, and combat performance. We'll be examining some of the most iconic tanks from these nations, from the legendary World War II era machines to the ultra-modern leviathans of today. We'll talk about the mighty German Tigers and Panthers, the formidable Soviet T-34S and IS series, and the robust American Shermans and Abrams. We'll weigh their strengths, expose their weaknesses, and compare their performance records in the crucible of battle. But remember, the question isn't as straightforward as it may seem. There are many variables at play from technological advances to strategic deployments. So, are Soviet and German tanks really superior? Stay tuned as we delve into the history and performance of these steel beasts. World War II, a time when tanks took center stage in warfare. The three major players, the United States, Germany, and the Soviet Union, each produced their own iconic tanks with unique strengths and weaknesses that would prove pivotal in the outcome of the war. By the last two years of the war, the three powers had chosen a unique role for their vehicles to fill. From the United States, we had the M4 Sherman, a reliable workhorse, the Sherman was known for its versatility and mechanical reliability. Its ease of production allowed it to be dispatched in great numbers, giving the Allies a numerical advantage. However, it was often outgunned by heavier German tanks, and its high profile made it an easier target. Germany rolled out the formidable Tiger tank. A beast in armor and firepower, the Tiger was feared for its 88mm gun, which could penetrate most Allied armor. But this power came with a price. The Tiger was expensive and time-consuming to produce, and its heavy weight made it prone to mechanical failures. Then there was the Soviet Union's T-34. Arguably one of the most influential designs of the war, the T-34 combined robust armor, a powerful gun and good mobility at a reasonable cost. Its sloped armor design was particularly innovative, deflecting enemy shots and increasing effective thickness without adding weight. However, the T-34 was plagued with initial manufacturing quality issues, and its crew conditions were cramped, affecting performance. These tanks, the Sherman, the Tiger, and the T-34, each played their own critical roles in the war. The Sherman, with its numbers and reliability, allowed for sustained operations. The Tiger, though limited in quantity, was a potent force multiplier on the battlefield. And the T-34, with its innovative design and balance of strengths, was a key factor in the Soviet Union's ability to resist and ultimately push back the German invasion. As we can see, each tank had its own unique characteristics and roles during the war. From this era, I have to say that German engineering was the forefront of the tank arena. However, the Germans failed, as they do now in their cars, to make reliable vehicles, and this was exacerbated by their lack of oil to run the vehicles. Thus, in terms of all-round goodness, the Soviets win this period because they incorporated new technologies such as angled armor, but also made somewhat reliable vehicles. The Cold War, an era of rapid technological advancement and tense standoffs. This was a time when the might of a nation was often judged by the strength and innovation of its armored forces. The stage was set for a clash of giants, the German Leopard, the Soviet T-72, and the American M-60. The Leopard was a force to be reckoned with. It was a symbol of German engineering prowess, combining speed, firepower, and protection in a balanced and intimidating package. The West Germans began moving away from their World War II design philosophy towards a more balanced mindset when developing their tanks. Moving eastward, we encountered the T-72, a product of Soviet thought. The T-72 was a reflection of the Soviet Union's approach to warfare, simple, reliable, and mass-produced. This tank was designed to be easy to operate and maintain, capable of fighting in a wide range of environments, from the freezing Siberian tundra to the searing deserts of the Middle East. The T-72 was a testament to the Soviet Union's limited innovation and their en masse army tactics. Then, across the ocean, we find the American M-60. The M-60 was a tank that followed after the M-48, but other than that it doesn't get talked about much. This is likely because it never saw much combat fighting for America, and saw most of its combat fighting for overseas nations. The M60 was a clear message from the United States that said, we still have a tank Russia, and it's probably better than yours. These tanks, each a product of their country's philosophy and approach to warfare, were designed for a war that never happened. 
The T-72 has to take the cake for this time period. The Leopard and M-60 were not groundbreaking in really any way, and the M-60 had its roots in World War II tanks. The T-72 is a platform that has held up for 50 years which demonstrates that it was ahead of its time. As we move into the modern era however, the whole picture is familiar. Scene script. Fast forward to the present day, where tanks are still a crucial part of any modern army. Let's dive into the world of current steel beasts, beginning with the German Leopard 2. This modern marvel, a true testament to German engineering, is a high-speed, high-weight machine. Its advanced composite armor and average firepower, backed by a German smoothbore gun, makes it a formidable block of metal on the battlefield. The Leopard 2, with its mediocre adaptability to various terrains and climates, has proven its worth basically nowhere because it hasn't fought yet anywhere besides Ukraine, where a half dozen have already been blown up. Now, let's shift our focus to the east, where the Russian T-14 Armada stands. This tank, unlike any other, boasts an unmanned turret and a fully armored capsule for the crew, increasing their safety. Its advanced active protection system can intercept and destroy incoming projectiles, making it a tough nut to crack. The Armada, with its blend of innovative design and cutting-edge technology, is a symbol of Russia's modern military might. However, it is also another example of how Russia builds machines ahead of their time. The tank would be amazing if it actually functioned properly in the ways it claims to. And then, we have the American M1, Abrams, a true embodiment of American strength and resilience. The Abrams is known for its multi-fuel turbine engine, offering average speed and mobility for a massive 75-ton block of steel. Its Chobham armor, a ceramic composite, provides excellent protection against a variety of threats. The M1 Abrams, with its precision firepower and advanced targeting systems, has proven its mettle in conflicts like the Gulf War and Iraq War. The major problem with the Abrams is its slowly increasing weight. Other than that drawback, the Abrams is the most tried and true of the three, and is therefore the best modern main battle tank. Anyone one who says otherwise clearly doesn't know the facts, and isn't American. But hey, we will have a chance to see the truth in Ukraine, if both sides are willing to use their best machines. Ukraine will have to if they want to stay alive. Russia on the other hand seems perfectly fine putting more Cold War tanks on the battlefield and hoarding their 5T-14S. As for the future, I think the future of the Leopard 2 is the brightest and the future of the American tanks is the darkest. With all of America's debt, they will need at some point to cut spending somewhere and the military may finally be their target. So are Soviet and German tanks really better than American tanks? It's a question that could keep a room full of tank enthusiasts debating for hours. Let's recap what we've discussed. From the Second World War we saw the introduction of a wide range of tanks from these three powerhouses. The German panzers with their advanced technologies were a force to be reckoned with. The Soviets brought to the table their T-34S, a model of simplicity and ruggedness, while the Americans introduced the versatile Shermans, designed for mass production and easy repair. The Soviets narrowly won here. As we moved into the Cold War era, the tanks evolved. The Soviet Union brought out the T-55 and T-72, tanks that were easy to produce and maintain, and known for their robustness in different combat situations. The Americans on the other hand, focused on survivability with their M60 Patton, a tank that remains in Cold War memory. Germany, having been divided after the war, came back strong with the Leopard 1, a tank that combines speed, firepower, and advanced technology. Again, the Soviets narrowly win this contest. Fast forward to today we see a variety of modern titans, the American M1 Abrams, the German Leopard 2, and the Russian T-14 Armada each represent the pinnacle of their respective countries' tank design philosophy. The M1 Abrams is the winner and I don't feel bad about saying that. Each tank has its strengths and weaknesses. The better tank depends on the specific circumstances and requirements. For a country that values simplicity and ruggedness, a Soviet tank might be the best choice. For a country that prioritizes advanced technology and firepower, an American or German tank might be a better fit. However, the tank that the strongest military on Earth uses will remain the best for at least a little while. That could change with the tides of history as other countries fill the US power gap. I hope you enjoyed this journey through the history of tanks. From the thunderous battles of World War II, to the tense standoffs of the Cold War, and finally to the titans of modern warfare, we've covered a lot of ground today. Whether you're a fan of the mediocre Soviet tanks, the precise German engineering, or the versatile American designs, 
there's no denying the pivotal role each has played in shaping the battlefield. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Do you have a favorite tank or perhaps a story about one of these mechanical beasts in action? Feel free to share your insights and anecdotes in the comments below. In future videos we'll continue delving into these captivating topics exploring the intricacies of military technology and its impact on our world. Remember, the debate about the best tank will likely continue as long as tanks exist. Until next time, thanks for watching Tank Vision.